Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. I have another product review coming up for you guys today. Today we're going to be taking a look at this laptop cooling pad from NT. And of course I'm going to stick with the usual plan of attack here. First I'm going to unbox it, then we'll take a closer look at it and run it through some tests. By the way you guys can get this thing off Amazon for 20 bucks. The link will be in the description if you want to check it out. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take this out of the box. But first let's take a closer look at the box. As you can see it's pretty minimalistic but it gets the job done. Uh, on the front we just have NT labeled and some information below that. If you want to read that switch the video over to 1080p and you can. Not going to spend too much time on it. I'll flip it over here. You can see we have a a little uh, sneak peek of the product right here. Uh, some product information down here. Once again, not going to read through everything because it's just going to take too long. If you guys want to switch it over to HD, you can do that yourselves. Uh, really excited to just open this up. So that's exactly what I am going to do. Let's pop this tab off and hopefully this is all in frame. You know what, I'm gonna give this one more check on the camera to make sure you guys can actually see what I'm doing. As you can see, I zoomed out a little bit just to guarantee that this would all be in frame. So now we're going to pop this open and there we go at first glance. I mean, this looks really nice. Wow, you know, I'm actually really surprised. It doesn't look too bad picking it up. It is pretty light, but it feels like a majority of it is um metal, wow. Okay, yep, so the top is metal. The bottom is made out of some sort of uh, ABS plastic. Not too flimsy, not too bad at all. Uh, and then also in the box, we have this USB cable to provide power from your PC to the laptop cooler. And then right below the NT laptop cooler, we have some, what looks like, uh, yeah, a tiny little user manual. I mean, the operation of this is gonna be super straightforward. We shouldn't really need to use that. Uh, and then we have a little warranty and support port card. So I'm going to move all this stuff off to the side. And now let's just take a closer look at the laptop cooler itself. Overall build quality is actually pretty good. It's a nice sturdy little laptop cooler. It's composed of plastic on the bottom and metal mesh on the top. The metal mesh is actually supported up by these built-in supports inside the laptop cooler. So when you place your laptop down on it, it's not just going to cave into the fans below uh, and make contact with them. As you can see, there's actually a nice design built into that metal mesh. So it's uh, pretty pleasing to look at. There's two rubber feet right here to prevent your laptop top from sliding around. NT logo right here. If we take a look at the back, you can see all the vents for the air intake. There are two arms right here. You can just swing those out and we'll prop your laptop up at an angle so it's more comfortable to type on. On the back, we have two USB ports. I'm not exactly sure why there are two. We'll have to look into that when we actually power this on. There's a nice clunky power switch right here and then an LED indication light right next to that. The pad measures approximately 15 inches wide, 11 inches high, and 1 inch deep, and is ideal for laptops between the sizes of 10 inches to 17 inches. I have this thing plugged into my ASUS G75VW right now. We're about to turn it on to see what it sounds like and looks like. Apparently it is populated with blue LEDs inside, so it should light up a nice blue color. Um, I know some of you guys like the blue LEDs, and I know some of you guys hate those. Unfortunately, they don't make a model without the LEDs inside. So if you don't like blue LEDs, this is not going to be the laptop cooler for you, and there is no way to turn them off uh, as far as switches go either. So yeah, you're stuck with them uh, if you buy this model. I personally like them, but once again, some people don't. Trial number two, because I forgot to plug it in last time. That was a bit silly of me, but now it should turn on. And there we go. I have the mic propped up right next to it, and you should be able to hear the slight hum that is being emitted from the unit, but it's not too bad, not loud at all, moving quite a bit of air. It's actually sucking air into it and blowing it out the bottom. Each fan has two blue LEDs right behind it, and currently the entire unit is consuming a little under three watts of power from that single USB port. Now it's time to figure out what the heck the second USB port is for on this laptop cooling pad. My best guess is that it's probably just to provide some extra power to the 110 millimeter fans on this thing. Uh, it might also be used to string multiple devices together, but we will see because I'm about to plug it in. I'm going to bring the mic down here to see if those fans pick up at all when we plug in the second USB cable. And I'm going to do it in three, two, one. Nope, no noticeable increase, at least to me. I can't hear anything. It might pick up a little bit on the microphone. I'll go back and listen to it, but I hear absolutely no speed increase, and I don't think there should be because these are actually supposed to be locked in at, I think, 1100 RPM. So uh, it doesn't seem like it's to provide any extra power, so it's probably to string multiple devices together. That second USB port is actually acting as an additional USB port to your PC. So I have my Samsung Galaxy S4 plugged in right now. It is charging through that USB port, and my computer is also recognizing it through that USB port. 
So you could actually use that to string multiple devices together or you could just use it as any other USB port. That's a really nice feature because you're not losing a USB port to the laptop cooling pad. I'm just going to throw a couple laptops on top of this now to give you guys a better perspective as far as size is concerned. This is my 20 inch ASUS G75 and it is on top of the laptop cooling pad right now and it actually fits pretty well despite uh, that it is quite a bit bigger than the pad itself. It does hang off a little bit but it's nice and sturdy on here and temperatures while sitting idle are a couple degrees cooler when sitting idle without the cooling pad below it. Here's my 15 inch Dell Inspiron 153521 laptop and this is nearly a perfect fit for this laptop cooling pad. And here you can see my tiny little Latitude 2120 sitting on top of it. So that's going to be about it for this video guys. Overall I thought this was a pretty decent laptop cooling pad. I mean I have handled some pretty crummy cooling pads in the past and this is definitely one of the better ones. Has a couple of really nice features like the uh, anti-slide feet on the front, the USB ports on the back, and these arms that will put your laptop up at an angle. Overall quality is pretty good. It is a bit light once again but you might consider that a pro especially if you're taking this on travel. Uh, SIPS power, really low power consumption, just under 3 so that's a plus as well and this is going to keep your laptop maybe one to three degrees cooler on average these tend to not really have a drastic impact on temperatures uh, but they do help especially if your laptop overheats quite a bit like the asus g75 gaming pc over there that one uh is a pretty hot little laptop so that's gonna be about it for this video if you have any questions comments or concerns you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section don't forget to drop a like on this video if you didn't like this video please tell me why don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel if you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links, both of which will be in the description. Once again, if you want to check this out, the link for this will also be in the description. Uh, thanks to NT for sending this over. Uh, don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. And of course, you can check out my Patreon as well if you want an additional way to support me. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.